thought of creating original designs is daunting, in this video, Kim and I will share tips and tricks to help you along the way. In addition to sharing template resources, we demonstrate making a pattern from a photograph or clip art and show you how to adapt quilt designs for geometric inspired mosaic artworks. Patterns, sometimes called cartoons, are meant as guides and simple contour line drawings. There are countless tried and tested mosaic and stained glass patterns available online, in libraries, and in craft stores. Children's coloring books can also be a good source for contour drawings. In my book, 300 Plus Mosaic Tips, there are many simple templates. You are welcome to use them and enlarge them on a photocopier. Having a pattern gives you a sense of how much material you will need and what colors. And remember, you can just go for it. In this clip, Kim comes up with a simple and really effective design. You don't need drawing skills to do this. I like to uh, work and design with chalk. We don't have to make it complicated. Um, a lot of people are looking for patterns, but really all we need is a few lines, and I'm going with um, sort of a 50s postmodern theme on this one. So I'm just going to draw some lines with my chalk. And I'm going to do some fish, so, you know, that are just like kind of fun fish. And let's see. Not a lot of drawing involved skills. And no, it's not refined yet, but I can just use my finger and edit them a little bit. And uh, yeah, now I'll go and refine them and go over what I really want it to be with the Sharpie. Yeah, I think it's kind of cute. When making patterns, keep in mind that the main principle for adapting source material into a design for a mosaic is to simplify things as much as possible. Here I have some photographs of flowers. A trick for making a pattern is tracing the image's primary lines. I place tracing or wax paper over the image and trace the shapes. Now I have a cutting guide. In this example, I have researched royalty-free clip art for a lotus flower. I downloaded and printed it out so I would have the basic lines. Then used tracing paper to capture the lines and blew my new line drawing up to size. Transfer your pattern to the substrate using carbon paper or transfer paper. Check that your substrate is oriented correctly if it has a hanging keyhole. In this next section, Kim demonstrates making patterns inspired by quilts. I was a quilter before I was a mosaic artist. And one thing I learned in designing quilts, I carry over into mosaics, that graph paper really can be your friend. To create your designs, enlarge your designs, it's really an easy way to test colors, lines, and patterns. The beautiful thing about quilt patterns is um, there's hundreds of them free on the internet. Sometimes you can get lucky and print them out to the correct size you need. Other times um, you might need to use your graph paper to draft them larger, which also allows you to color them in and test lots of things before you attempt your real project. The great thing is all this is copyright free and available easily. Some of the tools you'll need is sharp pencils. A compass always comes in handy if you'd like to do designs in the round. A good metal ruler with an edge. And of course, the all important graph paper, which comes in different types. I almost always look for the um, quarter inch scale graph paper. Some types are a quarter inch on one side of the sheet and an eighth of an inch on the other side. So it's just something to look at 
when you're purchasing a pad of graph paper. Before getting started, when I have my block drawn out, I always like to always mark the center. It just helps me start working out from there. Most quilt patterns, the center of the block's important. So, um, you know, I just wanna have a clear mark. Also, just wanna explain each one of these bolder lines, maybe I'll go here, uh, is one inch on this particular graph paper. And uh, so this then would translate into being six inches. But the beauty of this is, like I said, you can scale it up. So one of these could be six inches, one of them could be 12 inches uh, or two inches. Like this could equal two when you come to the scaling up. Okay. I'm gonna start out with a simple eight pointed square. We start with the eight inch square. So everything will come out you know, nice and even. I know this is my center, so we have two and two. Okay, we already have what's a traditional nine patch. Now the great thing about the graph paper is we can also find our diagonals, right? From corner to corner. Watching me draw is kind of like watching paint dry, but you can see how quickly our design is developing. And there we go. If you like, and uh, you can I want to add some circular design to it. Just use a compass, which I don't really have set correctly. So I normally make a couple of copies and then I grab my color pencils and then I can try out some different color combinations before I even get started. And you can go so far as to color the entire thing in. Another thing I'd like to add is you can start breaking this up into smaller pieces or even dividing it into more shapes. I guess you would say. Now that adds a whole nother dimension to your project. And see, it's just that simple. And we have a quilt pattern that you can make copies of, test colors on, use to scale up or whatever you like. Do this. We'll start this. We'll just, we'll just hold them like this. And... Remember, life's a mosaic. You pick the pieces.